Hey there and welcome back. So Flowwise just added support for GPT-5 and along with this release, they also added support for the Responses API, which gives the agent access to build-in tools like Web Search, Code Interpreter and Image Generation. So this combination along with GPT-5 and the features already provided by Flowwise is extremely powerful. This effectively makes it even easier to build agents in Flowwise. Now you simply have one node that represents your agent and this agent will have access to all of these tools without you having to set up anything manually. It just works out of the box. And we will have a look at a few fun examples in a second where we'll generate images, run code interpreter and more. But first let me explain what the Responses API actually is. Now the Responses API is relatively new. Before that, OpenAI exposed something called the Completions API. And the Completions API was developed way back when LLMs were used to simply send and receive text. But since then, models have become multimodal, we've developed agents with tool calls, and these things got way more complex. So OpenAI realized they sort of had to rewrite that API to not only deal with text, but also deal with things like audio and images, so that the model can receive images and generate images as well. And along with the Responses API, they also released native support for certain tools, like the ability to perform web search, run a code interpreter, and image generation. If you would like to learn more about using the Responses API by itself, then you can check out my dedicated tutorial series on the Responses API. But I just wanted to give you a brief explanation of what the Responses API is. Now, back in Flowwise, let's see how we can use this. Now, if you want to follow along, you can simply create a blank agent flow, and then let's add an agent node, and let's attach a start node to the agent node. I'm just going to rename the agent to just agent, and then for the model, let's select chat OpenAI, and I'm going to select my credentials, and under the model name, we now have access to GPT-5, GPT-5 mini, and GPT-5 nano. I do believe that most of these other models will be deprecated soon. So if you are using OpenAI in your projects, I do recommend switching over to GPT-5 at some point. Let's select GPT-5 mini. I'll just leave the temperature on the default value. And then scrolling down, I'm going to enable image uploads and I'll set the resolution to auto. And it's also enable reasoning. Because GPT-5 is a reasoning model, we can set the reasoning effort so the higher the effort, the longer it will take to generate responses, but of course the results will be better. Then under reasoning summary, I'll just select auto as well. Then let's add a system message and I'll just say, your name is Luna, a friendly AI assistant. And then scrolling down, we now have this built-in tool section in the chat OpenAI node. At the moment, we can access web search, code interpreter, and image generation. I'm actually going to add all three of these tools, and that's actually it. There's no need to add additional tools in this tool section. Now let's close this, let's save the flow, and let's open the chat, and let's see what we can do with this. Firstly, we do have access to web search, so we could look for up-to-date information. Let's say, please summarize the latest news article from OpenAI. And here's our response. We can see the web search tool was called and the agent was able to retrieve information from the OpenAI news page. And it's saying the most recent article was introducing GPT-5 and looking at OpenAI. That does seem to be the case. And of course, we're now getting that summary of the article. Cool. There was no need to set up Tavily or SERP API or anything else. Now, it doesn't mean you can't use those tools, by the way. If you don't want to use OpenAI's implementation, simply remove the web search tool and add your own. But of course, these built-in tools offered by OpenAI do play very nice with their own models. Let's have a look at working with images next. We can do two different things with images. We can pass in an image and then get the AI to analyze the image, or we can now get OpenAI to generate images for us right in this chat interface, which is actually really cool. Let's have a look at analyzing images. I'm going to upload this image of myself that I use in some of my thumbnails. And let's see if it's able to analyze this image. Let's say, please 
describe this image. And yes, this description is correct. Now let's get GPT-5 to do some interesting things with this. Let's say, please create a Studio Ghibli style version of that image. So that very common style that everyone seems to like. And of course I misspelled Ghibli, but let's see if GPT-5 is able to figure that out. And it's saying I can't create images exactly in that style, so it actually doesn't want to recreate other people's work, which is very interesting, but it is able to create a Studio Ghibli inspired version of the photo. And there we go. It's called the image generation tool, and it was indeed able to generate this image. Awesome, let's try one more. It's a, please plushify the original image. I know you can do this stuff in ChatGPT's interface, but having the ability to do it in an AI builder opens up a lot of opportunities to build some very cool automations. And here we go. So it's called the image generation tool again, and that is just awesome. That's a plushified version of me. All right, let's do one more. Let's say, Please use this plushified image in a YouTube thumbnail with the text, GPT-5 is awesome. Include the Flowwise AI logo in the image. And let's also say, please ensure to use the correct aspect ratio for the thumbnail. Let's send this. And cool, we finally get our image and there we have a plushified version of me along with the text, GPT is awesome. And an attempt to create the Flowwise AI logo. Now we could definitely refine this by actually giving it the Flowwise logo and telling it to bring it in and maybe make changes to the character. But I think the concept is just fine. Now let's move on to the code interpreter. For this, I'm actually going to allow file uploads as well. So I'll go to settings, configuration, file uploads, and let's enable file uploads. Be sure to save this, then back in the chat, we should be able to attach files now. So if you don't have that option, just go through the setting steps. With a code interpreter, we can get an LLM to solve very complex problems by first writing some Python code and then returning the results of that code execution back to us. So a very common use case is to take a complex data set, perform some operation on it, and then produce a chart or a graph or whatever we need. So for this demo, I've created this sales data CSV file that contains our sales based on different cities. So this contains things like the date of the sale, the city, the product that was sold, how many units were sold, the unit price, the customer's ratings, and our revenue. So what we can do is upload that file into the chat. So in the chat, we can say, please use the code interpreter to do something with that data. To keep it simple, I'm just going to say, create an interactive chart based on this data. Let's send this. Now, you probably don't have to tell it to use the code interpreter. GPT-5 is probably intelligent enough to realize when it should use the code interpreter, but for this tutorial, I just want to make sure it is actually using this tool. And let's have a look at what we got. So it definitely called the code interpreter tool, and if we open up this tool, you can actually see the exact code that was written. So this contains all the CSV data, and this might be hard to read, but this is actually generating Python code. So what we can do now is either click on this link or download this chart, which I'll do, and then let's run it. And look at that. We actually have this very cool chart where we can filter by city, and we can also select the metric like revenue or unit sold. And on the right, we can actually click to show or hide any of these cities. And this is actually really cool. And that's all because we have access to the code interpreter. I mean, the sky is really the limit here. You can actually have a multi-agent system that's able to generate graphs, maybe use image generation to come up with infographics or whatever else. And of course, if you wanted to share this with friends or family or maybe your clients, you can click on the API button at the top right, and we can actually click on share chatbot. I'll make this public. And now if you open this URL in the browser, and now you have a dedicated interface for interacting with your agent. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel for more Flowwise content. Also click on the card on the screen right now to watch more of my content. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.